afterwards it's Q&A. So if you have some questions that we don't cover, we'll have a whole, a whole time to where you can answer. And we're giving away a game, so and make sure to hold on to your tickets. Yes, don't lose your tickets. We still got a copy of Skylanders. Uh, Prototype Call, 2. Call of Duty Ghost, even though apparently nobody... Come on, Call it's a $40 dollar trade in value. Woo, Call of Duty! <laughs> Think outside the box. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, and finally, I am at Wabapo, Randomizer 9, Solis, author, and voice of OriginalGamer.com. Yes. And I'm going Woo. to give y'all... Oh, he gets a box. I'm not working here. So I'm, I'm just going to talk. Yeah. He's got the booming voice. All right, so let's go ahead and start with our first topic of discussion. This is going to be for our developer folks. And so the question or comment is, any development has exploded in the last few years. Do you think the increased exposure has made it easier or harder to get noticed? Uh, no, Google, that's cheating. <laughs> well, uh, well uh, it's become a lot easier to make games and put your games out there. And since there's a lot of us, there's more of us, but the community is really great and really willing to show games and conventions and journalists and competitions. There's a lot more like ways for indies to get out there. A lot more avenues for us to showcase some stuff. So it's easier to get, you know, moderately. I think it gets easier and easier every year, or every day to like get out there. So it's really easy, and uh, people expect good things from indie games because they've done good things. So people take them seriously. So yes. Yeah, there used to be like one indie festival, and now there's a dozen a month. Hey, so there's tons of places to go yeah. now to show off your games. Yeah. See, so, you know, it's a great time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, see, that was my thing. My, my thing was, you know, because there's so much out there and everybody and their dog can make, you know, an Android game or an iOS game, you know, does that make it, you know, is it easier to get lost in the crowd now? Well, uh, we always say that uh, uh, idea is cheap and execution is valuable. So there's a lot mm -hmm. of people then, in the, that I've talked to that they have these great ideas, but they just haven't gone through it yet. So. Okay, I think uh, Kobe has something to say. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. well, we'll get to you, man. We'll get to you. Anybody can start a WordPress site or a Tumblr and, oh, look at me, I'm a game journalist. 
And it's funny to me because like vlogger is kind of a, for journalists, vlogger is like a bad word. I mean, it's just like, it, you don't want to, that's what you want to be called as a vlogger. It's like, a oh, vlogger, Ugh, that vlogger guy. But, uh, but, it, but when you're saying that, you're kind of saying that, yeah, you don't have any ethics. And that's the way these guys get around it. They're like, yeah, I, I said, uh, yeah, I said that uh, Dead or Dead or Alive is the worst game ever because it has big boobs. I'm a vlogger. It counts. I'm not a journalist. But then they'll turn around next week saying, yeah, I'm a journalist. What? I'm not a vlogger. So right now, there's just too many people not following the general, the rules of journalism. And they're getting away with it because, frankly, a lot of readers, they'll still go back to Kentucky every day. Um, I, I also used to do, uh, I had a website as well. So, um, yeah, that one. Thank you. This guy knows. This guy knows. He's a fan. Uh, yeah, so I, uh, I used to have a video game website as well. Um, shutting down for a number of reasons, but um, they, uh, one, one of the things that I don't like, and uh, I know I know your site does it, I know most sites do it, um, I don't like scores. Um, I don't feel like scores for video games are very useful to me. Um, so if I read a review on a game, um, what, what we used to do on our site is at the very end we put three or four sentences to basically sum up the game and compare it to games that maybe you like. So, you know, play Call of Duty Ghosts if you like the previous Call of Duty games or if you like other FPS games. Uh, play Bioshock Infinite if you like, you know, more narrative type games and give examples of those because it's a lot easier for you to compare something and to attach a game to a different experience that you had earlier on. So, you know, uh, play Lost Odyssey if you liked uh, Final Fantasy. Okay, it's useful to me. I don't, for, for me, saying that, you know, this game is a 10 out of 10 like, and Pac-Man is also a 10 out of 10, and you know Final Fantasy 10 was also rated a 10 out of 10. Like that doesn't, there's no scale for me that that it doesn't make any sense because all of these games are in the same category. But for me, you know, some, like I I don't like Pac-Man. It's repetitive. It's terrible. I don't like Pac-Man as a game, but um, I know. You are dead to me. Gary. I I enjoy story games. Did you see his Pac-Man tattoo? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay. But. Do you want to see my Final Fantasy VI tattoo? I don't know. Can I give your comment four out of five? <laughs> that, that's, that's all that I think. It's just it's scores are like there needs to be there needs to be an evolution in language that is not happening yet. And I actually think that bloggers are are able to bring more of that in because there's so much and there's so many people doing it that if you can find an interesting way to describe a game and to, and to sell a game to people with your words. Then, uh, then it creates a better language for us to uh, like evaluate games. That's yeah. yeah All right, let's um, move on to the next one. This is also for question. Huh? question. Uh, sure. About like like you said, you don't like potentially score, but you know, let's say if you do potentially put a score, is it just because that you like it, or because that other people like it? You someone. I mean, so if I'm ever if I'm ever asked to give a score on a game. I say no, and then when they ask me again, I say, well, I don't have to review the game then, because if you're not going to let me talk about it the way I want to talk about it, I don't want to talk about it then. Um, but, I mean, like, if, if I ever had to apply a score to a game, I would apply how much percentage of fun that I had. So, I mean, like, I, uh, I, I play chess on my phone sometimes. 10 out of 10, love chess, chess is great. Um, but that doesn't mean anything to anybody else, because Probably you guys don't like chess that much. It's kind of boring. It's all about checkers. Yeah, it is all about checkers. Let me defend scores, Mr. Mr. Anti score. Okay, so I, I think the scores, I like scores. Uh, you know, when I look at the people that are defined as the critics, they use scores. I mean, Roger Ebert posted his reviews with a thumbs up, thumbs out, but also in the, in the newspaper, he did it for our, uh, four out of four stars. So the scores are there because the scores are designed to say, you know what, I really like this game, this is how much I like it. I can write a thousand words on how much I love the new South Park, how much I adore it. I can use every single positive, uh, you know, lovingly terminology in it. But when I give that game, you know, a great score, that tells you that it's a great game, except that Obsidian is a bunch of dumbasses who don't know how to program a game, sorry. So anyways, but that's my yeah, You have a question in the second.
Yeah, that's exactly why I don't really like scores. I don't find them that useful. But like, so for the South Park game, it's really easy to be like, yeah, this game is a lot like Super Mario RPG in its mechanics. Do you like the Super Mario RPG battle mechanics? You'll probably like this game. Narratively, it's more humorous, like, I don't know, some other humorous game. I can't around with Super Mario RPG was happening. Yeah, it doesn't matter! <laughs> like, you can, you can, you can it, it's because we have a, a large database of games you can compare it to. Uh, you know, like with with which you can compare other games to, it's, it's easy to to come up with a with better language system for that. And so, whenever like the the score disparity between two different websites, the the thing that I've always found useful in looking at other people's reviews is finding people who have like similar uh, uh, like knowledge and um, interest to me on the internet. So like uh, Polygon, generally about seventy five percent of the time, they're in line with what I enjoy. Um, but there's a whole bunch of other like smaller gaming blogs that I know this guy is almost exactly like me. He likes this game, and I haven't played it. I know that I'm gonna like it. So okay, it's... let's move on. Okay. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and actually, this one's for you, uh, Colby. Oh God, just me? Yep. Tell me, you're your yeah. video guy. Come on. I am. Yes, sir. And so, why do you think let's play oh, games are no, so popular? <laughs> okay. Um, frankly, um, frankly, I think watching somebody else play games, is, unless they're in the same room, is like watching paint dry. Well, that's so, and that's PewDiePie, the most popular YouTuber with 14 million subscribers now? Yeah. 20 something? No, no, he's past 20 million I, now. Yeah, I, he's got, I think he's number, like, the number one. He's in the top five YouTubers of all time. He's number one. I, yeah, I thought he was number one. I didn't want to say that. Is it, is it just, you know, people making funny comments? Well, that... so, specifically with him, it's because it's really funny to see somebody yell in, in Swedish or whatever he yells. Like, <laughs> but it's... I, I, I've always liked watch, so I, I do like watching Let's Plays. I have a Let's Play channel. I enjoy watching them. Um, the, the biggest thing that I think is that um, recently there's sort of been, um, a, like, we've been getting away a little bit from playing games with your friends and making jokes about it and not necessarily even, you know, focusing on the game but being like, oh yeah, and, like, uh, at work yesterday there was this guy who said this thing and whenever I watch something like uh, like Game Grumps or like uh, Two Best Friends Play or like any any of the really, you know, big Let's Players, it, a lot of what they talk about isn't doesn't really have a lot to do with the game. Occasionally they're like, oh, what is that guy? But like, <laughs> usually it's just like, yeah, so back whenever I was in high school I used to do musical theater and it was, it was really great. This one time I dropped my dance, my underwear came too, so whoops. But that's not a true story. That is a true story, actually. Um, but I, I always think that it's like it's bringing it back to, to hanging with video games, using video games as a medium to hang with your friends. Because now you can do it on a headset, and it's easy to do like with PC gaming, but up until they introduced like headsets and that became like a really big thing with Xbox and having parties and everything, it, like gaming turned from less of a conversation and less of a group and friend experience into something that was more solitary. Even if you were playing with 32 people online you've never met before, they're all in different countries, if you're not talking to them, you're playing by yourself. So the, like, Let's Plays brings it back to having friends and to having a sense of community along with the game. So you can say, oh yeah, I also noticed that the Power Rangers game was really terrible, except whenever you play as Jason, because he's great. Um, Audience, questions, comments? Front row. Do you think PewDiePie is like a nuisance? Because every time he, make, he shows a Let's Play and other people play the same game, they say like they're copying him? Well, so PewDiePie isn't a problem. I, I think he's I think he's probably a cool dude. I haven't met him, but he's probably a cool dude. What's, what's the problem is his fans. His fans are really, um, they're intolerant of other people doing the same thing that he does, which is silly because everybody does the same thing that everybody else does. So the, the second that PewDiePie does, okay, well, I'm going to do uh, South Park's Take of Truth, and all of a sudden you see Machinima doing their Let's Play, you have a ton of brofist comments that are just like, uh, oh, notice his PewDiePie because he swears in Swedish. I don't know. It's like it's a strange thing. Um, and I, his his fans are a, a really rabid fan base. Like if you guys listen to radio, the Opie and Anthony fan base also really rabid and terrible. Like they actively attack people's Facebook pages and talk about them dying. And it's great. It's hilarious if you're a part of that community. If you're not and you're being attacked by it, it's awful. So. Um, and I mean, PewDiePie has said numerous times, please be more positive to everybody in this fans okay, so, By the way, PewDiePie has 25,216,000 subscribers. That's more people than in the entire world. That's more people than <laughs> <laughs> Next question, right? Up. 
Oh, yeah. oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Sir? Uh, without uh, referring to anything controversial. Um, I recall following Let's Plays as far back as something awful, where it started off with just screenshot Let's Plays are either informative or comical. But that's all I know is a lot lately, and, uh, you, and with YouTube Let's Plays, uh, it can be a lot more, it can be a lot more, inter, maybe less than, it's hard to describe correctly. But basically, uh, how, do you, how do you feel, you, you know the Let's Plays for something awful, right? Right, yeah, of course. Uh, how, how do you feel about the Let's Plays that we have now as, as compared to what we can have for something awful? Well, so I think, I think Let's Plays has sort of swung the needle in two different directions. It started off with, I'm playing this game, here's this really humorous moment. In Final Fantasy VI, um, you know, this guy says, son of a submariner. Everybody remember that? That was hilarious. Take a screen cap of it, put it up. Or, you know, do an image manip of something that you're playing inside of the game. That's what I like to call really highly edited Let's Plays. The needle then swung really hard with PewDiePie and with every with all the other larger Let's Players. Um, I'm just going to capture my reaction holistically. It's just going to be me talking stream of conscious, and I'm going to put it up on the internet. Um, and now the needle is starting to swing a little bit back the other way. My Let's Play channel is less of a Let's Play channel, more of a highlight video, like Kraken. Kraken is, is my favorite Let's Player of all time because he picks the best moments, he puts it in there, he adds some stuff on top of it to enhance the jokes and bring them out, um, but he does, he, like, he lets the moments try to speak for himself. I like that about it. I like that it's edited and I like, um, I like that it's, it's presented in such a way that it's professional and it's less um, just screaming about random nonsense for 10 minutes and then the video ends. You know. Next one, last question, the next topic. End of the room. Um, I actually wanted to ask uh, what you. You guys are talking a lot about PewDiePie, but there's another channel that's up and that's actually rising in popularity. I I think they're rising in popularity to meet him. I'm not sure what they're at right now. But uh, what do you guys think about the game theorists? Uh, um, well, I mean, no, you can think. So. Um, I know what the. I mean, I know uh, the game theorists because he did his regular game theory show, right? Is that the same? That's pretty much the same. I because I, I think I. So I'm at uh, SGC. Um, I mean, in the end, the thing, uh, it's funny because the game theorist did have a video about uh, PewDiePie saying why PewDiePie is popular because he's like uh, available in like five different countries. So he, it's a whole little YouTube um, algorithm thing that PewDiePie has above everybody else. So in the end, no one's going to catch up literally because of YouTube's um, coding. They're not going to be able to catch up. But, but uh, what I was asking was what... What is your opinion of them? What do you think of their videos, their content? Oh, I was talking about the guy. I, oh. yeah. <laughs> their content, actually, uh, it, it depends. So um, I think a lot of their content is kind of dry, um, and it's really informational sometimes. Um, however, uh, I, I, I haven't, I haven't like, watched a lot of their Let's Plays. I've, I've done more of their Game Theory videos, and I like their Game Theory videos a lot because as somebody who's interested in game developing, who's not doing it because I'm not as cool as these guys. Um, it's it's really cool to see to see somebody think you know okay well this is this is what I think happened during development this is what I think it happened at this stage this is why I think these things are like, in this game and I like the fact that it's discussing games sometimes as more of a literature form uh, because games are a medium and if you discuss them more like in a literary kind of kind of language that makes sense and and I value that as as an input. Now, is it something that I particularly find enjoyable? No, I think I, I think you could do a lot more, like a lot better presentation of it. But um, to discuss games as literature, I think it's a uh, is a useful conversation. Okay, next topic. This one's a quick one. Sonic Tails or Knuckles? <laughs> Just go down the road. Uh, I, for some reason, I always like Tails. It's Knuckles. Ooh. It's obviously Knuckles. Cheaper per month now than Unity, but they typically uh, you have to pay royalties. 
And uh, yeah, if I, if I remember correctly, it was after you made fifty thousand. Was it was it fifty thousand eleven? Mm -hmm. Yeah, after, no, 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 with Unreal. Unreal. Um, yeah, Unreal. Not super sure. About it. Yeah, with Unreal three. Fifty thousand is for UDK. Hmm? The fifty thousand after you made fifty thousand, you had to pay. Yeah, yeah, because like twenty five percent or something. That was for the Unreal development kit. Right. The Unreal three. engine is five percent. Yeah, the Unreal Engine is 5% royalties, right? Yeah, Unreal 4 is 5, Unreal 3 is the one where UDK it was UDK was the weird. free version of Unreal Engine. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, um, in Unity it's free until you make 100,000, which is a pretty good deal. And then if you could buy Unity Pro, which is either 1,500 straight up and then you don't have to pay them anything anymore, or uh, $75 a month but no royalties. So that would be more expensive than Unreal Engine, but no royalties. So if you made a... I guess if you made a lot of money, then the uh, Unity Engine is better, but if you made less money, then... Well, you're placing a bet. I mean, that's kind of what it boils down to, because, you know, if you never make 100000 well, then, yeah, you're doing all right. But once you crack that limit and you have to give them more money, then it's like, ah, oh, nuts, you know, I bet wrong. You know, so, yeah. if you're, you're, like I said, you're really taking a shot for the arm. Okay, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Unity Engine, so I'm staying with the Unity Engine. And there you go. Red right best. I've heard, I've heard that Crytek has also made a move about offering a Crytek engine at a better rate than the Unreal Engine 4. Do you have any comment? Yes, uh, I believe theirs is like $9, 10 a month, no royalties. From what I read, I only saw it in one article. I didn't it like, that is also a really great deal. You know, it's kind of cool. So I'm really glad it's moving towards that because I think they saw like well, these indie developers who can't afford to get the crazy big engines where you have to call somebody, do secret knocks, head over, you know, bag the money. So the subscription model is really great for us. And yeah, but we'll save you a lot of trouble because an engine, you know, is a hard thing to write. I mean, it's a lot of worse. You make the underpinnings of what makes a game, the thing that makes things move on the screen and to keep track of scores and AI and all the other crazy stuff. You know, they do, these guys have done most of the heavy lifting. And so that's why, you know, everybody wants to use them now because it makes things not easy, but easier. Uh, I think there was a question there, bro. Do you guys think this is a, a revolution towards new, a new game industry? Um, yeah. yeah, like, well, like I was saying uh, on one of the previous questions, like, it's so easy now for anybody to make a game. Like, uh, anybody can just download the engine and pretty much do it. All you have to do is just know how, really, or have the will to do it. So, you know, now there's so many people. Front row. Uh, what would you think is better overall, not just because of the prices, because Unity, you can just pay your once and then you're through. But what would you say is better, the Unreal or the Unity? Because Crytek just came out and it's like, I don't know about that. Well, like I said, uh, I'm a big fan of Unity, so I'm sticking well, yeah, with you Unity. Unity. That's and the uh, you know, now I'm just like I'm pretty much an expert in Unity, so I wouldn't <laughs> take the time to like uh, learn a new engine unless it was like a really, really good deal, probably. And so, uh, yeah. Pros and cons, and uh, you know, we don't make first-person shooters, so. Thunder Engine is kind of geared towards first-person, and so is CryEngine. It comes out of the box with first-person readiness, so. Uh, it is easier to make first-person games with those right out of the box. And Unity, it's more from scratch, so... Um, yeah. Well, you folks are doing mobile gaming. Yeah. yeah. Unity seems to be like the career engine for mobile gaming, too, so... Anything else? No? Okay, next question. The, um, and we'll, when we can start with our developer folks again. And this is brief. This is a little outdated, but I do it in anyway. Do you think the developer of Flappy Bird was out of his flapping mind for pulling the game? Now he has since relented and he's gonna put it back out. But you know, given the guy was making what fifty grand a day, yeah, that's peak. Yeah, out of his mind. My uh, mom had a really good reaction when I told her that uh, this guy was making all this money and he took it away. She was like, you know, he must not have a wife. <laughs> <laughs> so he couldn't, he couldn't see from behind the screen. I remember something like that. <laughs> Yeah, I guess he was out of his mind, I guess. But I guess he, I'm pretty sure he had his reasons, and he did keep making money once it was down, because people still had it on their phones, so I'm sure it wasn't too bad. Some people even thought it was a, like a stunt, because since he said he was going to take it down, and more people went to it, downloaded it immediately, and you know, a lot of theories, I think. Yeah. Well, I think that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you.
because uh, I, don't, I don't know if you guys seen it, and there's a Rolling Stones article where they interview him. Uh, and he, he sounds like a really kind of emotional guy. He, was, he actually felt bad that people were mad that they were dying. He was getting emails saying, I hate you because all I'm doing is playing this game and I'm not working. All I'm doing is I'm not doing homework. I want to kill you because of that. So, he, you know, if you're like an indie guy and you're just making fun games and, you know, you're hoping other people are with him, and all of a sudden you're the super popular guy and people want to kill you, it's a little bit overwhelming. But I think he got enough loving, loving feedback after all the death threats. He got enough feedback, and yeah, he, it should be coming back. That's that was the word from GDC. So we'll see. Any yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now we'll move a little to the philosophy side. Is there such a thing as a perfect game? No. No. Uh, <laughs> well, let, let me get my answer. My, I, my answer is yes. It's called Tetris. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> That's just me. <laughs> The, the thing is, you want to say there isn't, but you want to say that there are games that hit on every point. You know, like, like you, you people say The Godfather is a perfect movie. There are, you could actually pinpoint like little things where the dialogue kind of didn't make sense or this person talked a little bit awkwardly. You could, you could pinpoint, you could nitpick, but if you don't nitpick, then you know, yeah, this is about as great as it gets. And there are games like that. If you don't want to call them perfect, fine, so fine. That's, well, that's, one of the, that's one of the reasons people do not like the perfect score, 10 out of 10, 5 out of 5, because, well, you're insinuating that it's perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect game. You know? See, so to me, Bioshock was a perfect game. Yeah. Uh, Bioshock, yeah, first of all. Um, Yes, I think there is such a thing as a perfect game, but it's a perfect game with respect to a person. So for me, Final Fantasy VI is the penultimate perfect game. I love it. I no, I I I have never stopped playing Final Fantasy VI since I started playing. So that that's just, I I think I think there's such a thing as a perfect game for a person, not not overall though. Definitely personal, and I think uh, you should read the negative reviews of Skyrim. You know, people have played 500 hours, like, this is not the perfect game ever. I spent 500 hours, thumbs down. I don't, uh, I, don't, I don't really think there would be a perfect game. Um, I mean, because it changed depending on different people, and I know that there's, like, uh, you know, a lot of psychological things you can put in the game to get people addicted to it, but that wouldn't be, uh, that wouldn't be perfect. <laughs> So I think a new idea will always come along, and another new idea will always go better than the old idea, usually. So, like, um, I'm you right now, have, like, Dark Souls 2, or, like, certain, like, Dark Souls 1 fans are like, it's easier than people are like, well, it's easier because you played Dark Souls 1 first and got good, and then now you're playing Part 2, or, um, so, you know, the ideas have to change, I guess. Question, end of the first row. Hey, someone got Sorry. Dark Souls. I, was, I couldn't really wait. Um, this is something else that was covered by the game theorists. I watch them a lot, as you can probably tell. But uh, they said that every gamer games to fulfill certain needs, and for each individual person, the perfect game could be something completely different. For me, the perfect game is Tales of Asperia, but that's not to say that it's the same for anyone else in here. Yes. <laughs> or for over again. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys think of the game Limbo? Ooh. Uh, Limbo, Limbo's kind of cool. That's um, like the perfect game in my opinion. I didn't think it was a perfect game. Um, I thought it was too slow for me. Oh, it was just mechanically too slow. But that was just, that was just me. <laughs> I know with me, I, I love it, but there was some points where even I'm like, okay, that's just too cheap. Okay, that's just too cheap. That, I, because I take trial and error games. I mean, it's frustrating, but when you pass it, you feel accomplished. I mean, that's what Dark Souls is. Um, you're like, yes, I finally did it. But then, but with Limbo, as much as I love it, and as much as I'm still at the ending, like, what happened? Um, I'm still. There's still points where I'm like, yeah, yeah okay. Just, just, can you give me a heads up? I mean, it's, it, there's nothing wrong with being cheap, but there's one way to get too cheap. Do you guys think that From Software is too brutal as far as Dark Souls goes? Like, I mean, do they just like enjoy mastering you and like putting people behind you? And... I think they're going by the public's reaction. 
I, you know, when, when one of them in, um, in 2010, uh, I did a top five list of the biggest surprises of 2009. Number one was Demon Souls, because there was no, I, be, after all years of saying how video games are easy, I would have never guessed that the most punishing, difficult game out there would be like game of the year at several places. So people want a challenge, and the fact that it, it's kind of fair. It's, it's difficult as hell, but it's actually kind of fair. It doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't give you a break. So I, I think they're going by like, hey, if they want more pain, we'll give it to them. Goggles in the back. Yeah. Um, to response to her, I'm guessing people love Skyrim so much just because they can mod it, and they keep playing so they can just keep adding on stuff over and over again to let them keep playing. Because if you play it on a console, it gets boring after a while because there's nothing more to do. When you have a on 60 cheese wheels in one spot, yeah, that's, that's a good Yeah, and she mentioned Steam, so I'm sure those, those guys have mods. That's a Steam review. So, it's sweet. Uh, back row? Yes. When I was going to reply to the Dark Souls comment. To me, uh, growing up, I used to play uh, the original Legend of Zelda. I used to play the original Contra, Ninja Gaiden. And those were games I played for fun. And I had not had as much fun playing any of those games until the Souls series came out. Like and I have uh, one of my buddies who we used to sit and play the Legend of Zelda together, and I was telling him, look, man, just face it, this is the Zelda, this is the grown up Zelda game and Nintendo kind of game, honestly. And you can argue with Jordan Haskins, like, you're a grown up Zelda game, but not the Dark Souls game. Yeah, the thing is, I beat Zelda when I was seven. I don't think I beat this when I was seven. Because there's a remake where you just, hey, we're going to make it pretty. And that's about it. Then there's a remake, like, we wanted to do this, and now we can. And that's where, that's where it comes to. And also with sequels, they're the same thing. Um, they, you know, they, they put in all the stuff at the beginning, and then they have to cut stuff out. 